McDonald to deep left field. Hamilton back at the wall. Off the wall! Welcome to Boston, Darnell McDonald, the Red Sox newest hero. Driven to deep left center. Way back and gone. First as a Cub for Darnell McDonald. So imagine if we could uh, focus on the baseball or focus on anything that we're doing. That's a superpower. So this is a superpower that we have. We can develop this skill of being present, being in the moment. High drive, deep left. He's got another deep, far, and very gone. Darnell McDonald takes him out of the yard, and the Red Sox lead it one to nothing. So that's a podcast room that you got there. You talking to me? Oh, you got Darnell's got a podcast room. Yeah, you got the Joe family. Rogan shit. Black Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. No, I was just talking to Andre a little bit about um, kind of like his back and forth and his routine and everything that he's got going on. Like some days, obviously, he has it. He was saying personally that uh, he's been going through some struggles since he's been been back down in uh, AAA in Oklahoma, but that's kind of part of it. And I told him that I'm speaking from no experience and that Darnell could uh, definitely have way more insight as to how all of that goes, kind of playing every day, whether it be at the minor league level or at the major league level of, you know, having good at bats one day and then going through like an 0 for 20 streak, you know, the next couple of weeks, kind of how um, to face that type of mentality. Yeah, it's crazy, right, Andre? To the point of, um, I think you guys, the ball's even different, right? Yeah, they, well, it says Major League Baseball on it, so it's different uh, than last year. Last year, we had the PCL ball, um, but, man, this year, the baseballs are, every ball you get is different. It's wild. And then every climate you're in is different. So, you know, when we're playing El Paso, the ball's dry and powdery. And now it's starting to get a little humid out here in Oklahoma, so you got a little more tack on the ball. But still, man, it seems like the, every ball you get is just a little bit different. So you know what? You go back to uh, that Little League mindset. And I was looking, I think it was uh, when you were in double-A, is Tulsa double-A? It's kind of you had a, uh, a breakthrough there. What would you do there in double-A? You know what, man? Last year, I uh, I told myself, you know, I'm gonna get out of my own way this year. Um, and obviously, I have stability starting in Double A. You know, you're gonna go until they call you up anyway. So um, I knew I was there, and I told myself, you know, let's just go see what I could do. Let's get my stuff in the zone. Um, let's see, how, let's see how much damage they're gonna do. And really, what happened? I was throwing a lot of strikes, striking out a lot of guys, getting early contact, being efficient. And those are things that, you know, I had success in, you know, previously or before that, but hadn't put those outings back to back to back to back. And, you know, that was like the main theme. I wasn't tinkering too much. I was just like going out there and super consistent because that's kind of what I struggle with. You know, so I, I brought the same stuff to the ballpark every day and, um, you know, it was easy. And then, you know, towards the end of the year, started doing the up down and then, you know, things get, you know, out of your routine a little bit. You learn from it and still learning a lot, you know. Um, going through it a little bit this year, up, down. So, you know, things change, you know, different teams, different atmospheres, different types of rules, AAA to the big league. So, you know, you got to be able to adapt in this, you know, it's a learning process for sure. And all, all that stuff you're talking about makes you stronger. Literally right. makes you stronger. I, I used to, that was, when I came up with the Orioles, they had all these rules, man. So many rules that it was like, you forgot you're a baseball player that we're playing baseball. You gotta wear your uniform this way. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. You gotta do like, man, let's play baseball. But um, you know, we gotta do what we have to do so we can do what we want to do. And that, the thing that stood out for me is you said I was filling the strike zone up, filling it up. Here it is. Let's go. Here it is. Um, and I know a lot of times that we, we you get to the big leagues and you we think we have to do more, right? And it took me a period to understand that 
the same game. Matter of fact, it's even easier. I think for me, it was easier to play in the big leagues than it was in the, the bushes where all, you know, all the balls are different. And then we talk about the, the bus rides, the routines and yeah, the minor league rules. And you know what? You gotta go, it, no expectations. Right. No expectations and uh, get back to that mindset of, of filling the strike zone up competing um you know I, I get it it's easier it's easier said than done but these are the times where you look back and it's like a, a transition period you're like man i look back and this is when for me it was durham i had just gotten released um in cleveland i just had my first daughter i get released and like i don't know what <laughs> what's gonna happen a week later all right. I'll go to durham north carolina and it was a turning point in my career but, you know, I say I got so much love for, for Durham, North Carolina, Southern Hospitality, Bill Evers. He just he's put me in the lineup every day. And that's just one of those times where I'm like, man, that was. You like, learned a lot. Yeah. Made it, well, this is like a, it's not necessarily a mental break, but yeah, I mean, with the Dodgers in L.A., there, there's a lot going on, man, you know, on any big league team. So this is the yeah. time. Go back, you strip, you strip, you know, you strip away some layers. You go back to the basics, baby. What got me here? Right. You to get right. here, you know? And I'm going to be the best here, you know? I just I had to play a little mind games with myself in the minor leagues. I spent a lot of time in the minor leagues, but I would uh, kind of, what helped me compartmentalize things was I'm playing right field. I want to, I want to be better than the right fielder I'm playing against. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and that just kind of helped me get away from thinking about somewhere, somewhere else. And I think about all the bats I wasted thinking about, uh, you know, why is this guy up, up in the big leagues? Why am I not there? Why am I batting seventh instead of whatever? Um, and that's why this mindfulness is so important, right? Mm -hmm. Paying attention on purpose, being in the moment, being here, and, uh, you know, letting go of those expectations, letting go of, um, uh, shit, man, it's... All the, all the extra stuff, man. Yeah. All the extra stuff. Yeah, it, no, that's cool what you said. Like, when you come down here, it is a breather. It's a breath of, a breath of fresh air. And it's cool too because we have a pretty pretty cool roster here. Um, our AAA team, it's a big league team, man. We say it all the time. You know, we got vets here, we got young young guys, young prospects, and we got everybody in between in their careers, which is pretty cool because you get to hear a lot of different stories and guys going through the same thing I've been through. Um, so it, it is pretty cool, man. And, and and we all get along really well. Everybody bought into being here. We just we're winning games. It's fun. We got a good staff. Like. It's, it's, it's really cool. So it is a breath of fresh air. You know, the lights, the lights are a little, you know, don't shine as bright. So you get to be you a little bit more, you know, not people coming through the clubhouse and doing whatever, um, which it is a breath of fresh air for sure. Yeah. And, and use it as that, man. And I, I would encourage you to, you know, we have a choice of where we point our attention to. Right. And so all those things you just said, really like, Again, those are the things that you're going to remember on the journey. That right. come around, and that's what I think back to, like the bus rides, playing cards, and, you know, really being able to be yourself. And, and, and down there in the bushes. Or we can focus on, man, I should be somewhere else. And, get, you know, create stress, anxiety, tension. And, uh, you know, so I think you're doing it right, right there. All you guys are, if you're doing that. Like, we're buying in, this is where we're at, and we're going to make the best of this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I really, I, man, I missed, I, I missed, I missed them days. That's the part I, I to be honest with you, I missed, I missed that, man. Yeah. Little, you know, and, but the PCL, I was, they, they got, they have really nice cities in the PCL. The only thing with the, the plane rides would end in my career, the wake up calls. I actually missed a flight one time. I'll never forget, I missed a flight. Uh, we're going to, uh, Memphis. So I got I got to the game like uh I want to say like third inning. Mm. 
Third right, in, we got uh, Martinez. Martinez was on the mound throwing 100 miles an hour, 90 mile an hour changeup. Of course, my, my Marty Peavy puts me in a pinch hit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know you got to do that. But, yeah, those, those stories are, you remember from, from those days. But other than that, man, like what, like what's the difference between what you did in AA and in the big leagues? And then where you're at now? Um, you know, you could you could blame it on a lot of things. You can make a lot of excuses. I think it's just in the right mind state, finding that flow state on the mound. Um, I think that's just something that you just find in the competitive nature. You know, all the stuff you do, all the preparation, the routine, like that's that's great. And I think it's really good and then really important um, to control that stuff because that's the stuff you can control. But I think that, you know, like there's something about, you know, getting in that competitive environment where it's just you and the hitter and um, finding yourself out there. Um, and that's something I'm not searching, you know, I'm not I'm not I, I don't want to call it searching, but uh, that's when you like learn, you know, when you can dissect the game, you know, the day after and say, you know, this is what I was. This is where my mind was at today. You know, these are the results I got. And I think that helps with the consistency. Um, and, you know, again, just diving into the work. Um, but the, the big difference has been, you know, in and out of the zone a little bit more, a little inconsistent there. So just diving into the work, trusting, you know, trusting the work that we're doing is going to get is going to um, produce the same results, if not better. Um, but also knowing that, like, you know, I'm not I'm not far removed from that either. You know, even though the struggles, um, you know, the years going like this a little bit like you got to you got to trust that, you know, it's 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 not you know i'm not i'm not getting worse you know it's just i'm going through bumps and bruises and i'm gonna be better for me better for it i'm gonna learn from it um oh, you know so yeah. this isn't the last time it's gonna happen so you know next time I'll, I'll i'll be better for it and i'll be able to you know diagnose it and move on a little bit quicker yeah you're not coming back because you're gonna come back better you're right. gonna come back and you're gonna believe in your stuff right and you're gonna get back to filling the zone up you know, not trying to miss bats, being perfect. Um, Ken Revisa used to talk about the, the perfect stitch, you know. The perfect stitch kills. You just need a good good stitch. Perfect stitch takes too much time, right? So how many good pitchers can I execute? You know, and beliefs. And so if we lose this confidence, we just lost our focus. That's all it means. We just lost our focus. Yeah. We have to come back to our intention. You're a beast, man, slinging that thing. Yeah. My uh, my, you know what I'm saying. So getting back to yeah. trust, trusting it and filling it up, man. And it's uh, it's we get a lot of information, and especially you know nowadays, uh, especially in in the big leagues, minor leagues too. We didn't have video. Now they have video, but uh, it, it was actually like a, a gift to not do that. Cause like little league, you know, watching video and. A lot of times we watch video and, and we're watching, putting these negative images in our in our in our minds, the stuff we don't want to do. So I love guys to watch uh, like feel good videos. Watch your punching guys out. Watch. Yeah, them. that's what I do before my games, man. I always I always watch the strikeouts. The, the morning yeah. of my my starts, I watch the strikeout strikeouts. Watch the good stuff. But you know something you said about how many good pitches you throw. My my boy JoJo uh, Josiah Gray pitcher with the Nationals um, told me this quote last year. He goes, let good be great because great turns into shit. So when you're going out there, just let your good stuff be great, you know, because when you try to be great, it goes to shit. So that's that's something that I like. I, I uh, put it on my glove, you know. I, I, I try to tell myself, you know, just let the good stuff be, you know, be great. So. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And it feels like something that's attainable you can do that yeah so the goal is to be able to do that in daughter stadium do that in the playoffs do that in the world series have that same mindset right and understand that that works like that's enough um and and getting back to man what do i do well you know what do i do well focus on that what do i do well right and do that well as long as you can, 
right? Mm -hmm. Mario Yano do one pitch and pitch a long time with one pitch. Great self awareness. Mario Mariano points out like that at ball game, game's over, start packing, packing up, you know. <laughs> so yeah, man, I don't. You know, we, less is more. Less is more. Right. You got to go back to. You got to tell me about Vail, Arizona. I ain't never heard of Vail, Arizona. I, I'm from Colorado, <laughs> Vail, Colorado, but like. Yeah, it's not the same. I'll tell you that much. It ain't the same. Um, not Vail, man. So grew up uh, military parents, Air Force. Um, dad did 23 years. Mom did 20. Um, so I was born in Virginia. They were stationed at Langley Air Force Base. Um, okay. Then we moved to Alaska. Wow. Um, yeah, Anchorage, Alaska out there. And then uh, when I was little, probably like five or six, we moved to Tucson. Um, uh, and that, and that's kind of where they my, they both retired there in Tucson and settled there. So I grew up Tucson. Vail is just like a suburb. It's like mm -hmm. uh, it's like Summerlin to Las Vegas if you guys are familiar with that or something. Scottsdale to Phoenix, just the same thing. So um, yeah, Vail, small small little small town, um, but you know it was a big school. So a lot of people moved out there. Um, but it was cool, man. As growing up, you got to see everybody, different cultures, you know black, white, brown, everybody. So uh, it was cool. Um, we had good baseball, good uh, travel teams. Um, so I always grew up around sports. It was, everything was sports for me and my family. Um, you know, so and I was blessed. Multiple sports? Yeah, uh, baseball, baseball since five, basketball since five. And then uh, middle school, I started playing soccer. So baseball, basketball, soccer. I had to give up. I had to give up basketball. Unfortunately, it's still my favorite sport. Uh, I don't get to watch it as much anymore. Um, dunk. But what's that? Did you dunk? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was. I didn't know. You know, I, I always uh, pride myself on you know being able to do that, and I try to be the best athlete on the field at all times. Doesn't matter if I'm not a hitter. Um, you know, that's 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 my that's me, and so you know, I, I try to I try to pitch. Uh, you know, naturally, you know, I, I try to be natural out there. I don't try to do too much, um, try to flow, try to be smooth. Smooth like jazz is another one of my quotes that I try to be like. So that's a great yeah. quote. Smooth yeah. Like jazz. But yeah, man, that's what that's that's what you are. That's who you are, man. And and um don't forget it, right? Don't mm -hmm. forget that, man. Be athletic. You're a baseball player. Right. Baseball. Right. Something you've been doing all your life. Right. The lights just have more lights. You have the extra level seats. Um, but that mound is your sanctuary, right? When you step on that mound, that rubber, that rubber says, I'm ready, right? You don't get that toe hole until you're ready, right? Mm -hmm. Like how many pitches can I throw with an intent and execute? Then we can do it right. again. We can do it again. Right. Then again right right best part is like yeah man I'm getting punched in your mouth and like you know, going you know so I, I'll tell you one thing okay when I was with the Reds I made the team out of camp in 09 I ended up getting sent down and it was the first time I got sent down with a different mindset I always got before you know before I'd go down I'd be pissed off blaming people this and that the, in 2009 when I went down I was like yeah Work on all the stuff that I need to work on. I'm coming back better, and I was really thankful because Dusty Baker he did call me back up, and then see this happens like once an episode. Andre he forgets to uh, plug in his laptop, and then it dies. <laughs> And it's becoming a trend. It's actually really fun. It's like a, oh, it's like a bit on the show. Oh, man, that's hilarious. That's hilarious, man. No, but to kind of like piggyback off of that, here's where I chime in. Here, here's, here's plan B. Kind of like, you know, you guys were talking about, um, you know, kind of having to relearn to focus on things that you can control versus things that you can't control, right? And it's mm -hmm. obviously a different animal playing um, um, down there as, a, as it is opposed to being up in the show. Um, 
the first time you ever got called up, what was kind of going through your mind there expectation wise? Like, did you have expectations set when you first got called up when you first stepped on the mound, whether it be at Dodger stadium or I don't know if you guys were on the road when you made your debut, but like, was there an expectation there? Were there nerves? Oh man, I, it all happened fast last year, to be honest. Um, I was in double A half the year and then, um, having a good year, you know, I was already on the 40 man roster. So, you know, in the back of my mind, I had an idea, you know, I'm pitching well, maybe I'll go up to triple A and see how it goes. And if I pitch well there, I'll get called up, but it happened really fast. Trade deadline happened. Um, some guys got moved and I got up to triple A, have two starts here. And then next thing I know, our manager goes, Hey, you're going to the show. And everything was happening so fast. I didn't have time to think, you know, it was just like, right, I'm going to stick to what I'm doing. And, uh, cause what I'm doing is working. And, you know, that's what I did. It was, it was a blur, man. My, my debut was against the pirates in Dodger stadium, August 16th. Um, and I had just gone up to triple A like August 3rd. And, uh, you know, what happened was they said, hey, we're going to have an opener. And, you know, Doc says, hey, we're going to have an opener. And then you're going to go as long and as long as you can. So uh, I ended up going four. Didn't give up any runs, had five punches. And it was like, it was magical, man. My whole family was there. It was awesome, man. And um, got optioned and I ended up pitching again in 10 days and had another good outing against the uh, Rockies. And then... Um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, and then from there, it was up, down game all year, but whatever, man, I was cool with it. I was like, you know, what? my dreams came true and didn't really have any expectations, but going into this year, you know, I, a little more competitive. I want to get there and, you know, show what I could do a little bit more. Um, you don't feel as much of a, as a, a rent arm. You feel like a person right. again. <laughs> right. So uh, not that they ever made me feel like that or anything, but that's just the, that's the nature of the game, you know, coming up your first couple of years, it's, you know, maybe, you, you know, guys have, you know, their stable positions or whatever, and you know, you'll fill in and get opportunities where the team sees fit, you know, and you got to embrace it, man. You can't fight it because that's what everybody has to go through, you know, but the expectations don't change, man. You want to get there and stay there. That's the goal, you know? And, um, you know, that's that, that I think when you keep it that, that simple, like less is more, you know, um, you know, the, the game will take care of itself. Pitch well, put the pressure on them. You know what I mean? They got nothing else to do, but, you know, call you up and, you know, let you go. So, right. I mean, it's interesting because it's something that you work your entire life towards. Like this is like a dream come true almost like this is what you've been working towards. But at the same time, the older you get, like the wiser you get and the more, you know, like. I'm good at what I do. I just got to focus on the fundamentals. And at the same time, everything else is going to kind of, kind of take care of itself in a way. Like, did you feel mm -hmm. that like you're at a point where it's like things are meant to happen for a reason? Like I worked hard to this point. I know I'm, I'm good at what I do. It's just, I just got to execute and not worry about yeah. little things. Yeah. I mean, like I, I'm a big leaguer now, man. So you gotta, you gotta think like that. You know, it still doesn't feel, you know, it always felt like it was supposed to happen in my life you know it was one of those things where like everything i've done i was like this is supposed to happen and so when when it does happen it's something that you know like you feel you know you don't know what to feel about it. i didn't you know at the end of the year i was like i had to self-reflect and be like whoa this is you know i'm here but you know i do approach the work a little different now because you are older a little bit wiser so you, you approach the work a little bit smarter. You don't try to do too much. You try to stick to what you're really good at because when you're up there, you know, you're going to do what you're good at. You're not going to, you know, fiddle around with your, you know, third, fourth pitches, you know, that aren't maybe aren't your best too much. You're going to throw, you're going to throw what you throw um, really well and you're going to throw it off, you know, and that's, so you kind of have a little, you know, smarter focus about, you know, what's going on in terms of, uh, in terms of what you're doing when you're up there and then you can approach your work a little different, you know, when, when you come down to triple A. Cause again, I feel like everything is going to be different. Like you're going to have days where you don't feel it days where you feel it days where you feel it and things just aren't going your way. And even days where you don't feel it that well, but things are just like clicking, like you're getting out and it's just, Oh, I guess I got lucky today. Like it can go any yeah. which direction. Yeah. hundred percent. And you know, when, when you have those days, you take them for what they are and try not to overthink them. You know what I mean? Because again, you have a bad outing, but you look at the outing before 
it's like what changed you know the results did you feel worse did you feel better like you know it, when you start going down the rabbit hole of trying to change something every five days it's it's really hard to know who you are um and that's something i think is really important is just keeping that baseball identity you have and like locking onto it learning it and you know being open-minded but also being you know stubborn at the same time sometimes Mm. what do you do to kind of like relax what whether it be like you know just like hanging out at home right now kind of like kind of the music you listen to to get ready just like kind of the daily rituals that kind of calm your nerves in a sense or just kind of like get you ready to perform at the best possible level that you can i think it's really important to have a life outside of baseball so for me it's like getting up and just going to find you know a little coffee spot whatever city i'm in or some breakfast yeah. um especially on the road a lot of guys will go get breakfast together but you know, uh, I'm, I, I love music, man. Um, I'm a huge music fan. I listen to everything. I mean, literally everything, uh, hip hop, R and B country, rock, everything. Um, so, uh, I actually just got this little, you know, MIDI piano. I, I, yeah. I grew up playing piano. Um, I always played piano, played in the talent show in high school. So, so, um, I got this little MIDI piano with some beat pads on it. So I've been making some of my own beats or whatever. So just doing that for fun. I I, I kind of grew out of the uh, video game phase um, the last couple of years. So that's kind of my free time is past there and Netflix. And so, but I always got music playing always. You can ask my wife, she's, she probably gets annoyed because I'm like, you want to listen to music? She's like, come on. <laughs> but yeah, I love music, man. That's, that's usually, you know, what that gets me ready or clears my head or, you know, it's always going on. So. That's me. I've been in the podcast game for six years now. I don't listen to any shows. I just, I listen to music when I'm in the car. I'm just mm -hmm. bouncing the music all the time. Like I've been itching to get a drum set in my apartment for months now. I'm, I'm waiting to pull the, tr uh, the, the trigger on a drum set. But um, yeah. what, are some of, what, what are some of the artists that you listen to? You grew up in Virginia. I know uh, my favorite Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters grew up in Virginia. Um, yep. I was going to say Dave Grohl. I, yep. I, I'm huge i've been learning a lot more about the foo fighters and rp you know to uh taylor, taylor hawkins right yeah yeah rp taylor hawkins man uh legend um yeah but the foo fighters when i say rock the roll i really mean the foo fighters <laughs> yeah i love it i love their music man and it gets me going for sure that's something i'll throw on before games um i'm really on thames right now um oh, yeah. she's a I love her music, man. She's she's great. Uh, it's like it's like Afro soul R and B kind of funk, but with a little bit of like I don't know. She kind of she's just a cool vibe. Um, but the, you know, my main run is Blast. Uh, Blast is based out of L.A. Um, she's got some good stuff, man. So uh, kind of all over the place. <laughs> I love it, dude. The, yeah. the more all over the place you are, the more creative you're going to be with stuff and how you, yeah. how you handle life and get things done. How does, um, you know, I know you only got a few minutes here, but how does um, your wife like uh, going all over the place, kind of traveling on the road? Like you said, you live in Scottsdale. You're in Oklahoma now. You'll be in L.A. hopefully at some point soon. You know, you're just all over the place. How, 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 does, how do you guys navigate that? Well, uh, well, so she, she, she likes traveling and she's a trucker, man. She doesn't, she likes driving around more than she likes flying, but she grew up in a small town. So, uh, she, she's a homebody. Um, so she likes to have a home base and for her, for us, that's in Phoenix. Um, but she'll come out and visit for extended periods of time. She's actually a, uh, she's a nurse. Um, so she has a little bit of flexibility where she can juggle around her schedule to come visit a little bit more, but she likes having her own thing too. Um, which I, I really appreciate that. Um, she has her thing. I have my, my thing, but then we're always supporting each other. Um, you know, and it, it, it gets a good balance for us. Um, but she, 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 she does really well. She's super supportive uh, of my lifestyle and the travel and stuff. And, she she'll always catch us on the road, you know, check out cool cities, you know, places that she's never been before. So I think it's pretty cool for us. That's actually really fun. What what what's kind of like your biggest um goal moving forward? Obviously, to get back um to LA, probably one of them. You're enjoying your time now as well. But like, is there like a specific thing that kind of drives you forward? Uh, a certain thing kind of on the agenda that you want to accomplish, whether it be like a specific moment or you know just an overall goal. 
Yeah, I keep uh, visualizing myself helping our, you know, helping throwing some big innings in, in the playoffs. Um, we got a great team, like really good team. And, um, you know, but I, I want I feel, you know, even though I'm here, I feel part of the mix. Um, I, I know the guys really well up there and, you know, they, they always make me feel comfortable or whatever. But I, I definitely want to I want to throw in big innings, you know, and I, I keep visualizing that, um, whether that be down the stretch in a pennant race or um, in the playoffs. Um, and I want to help us win a ring. Um, and that's that's my main objective. You know, I, I want to, you know, all this time now I spend with the overall, you know, that's the overall goal for the year um, is to help us win the championship um, and prove it to myself, man. I know I can do it. Um, I know they believe me and uh, believe in me as well. They help tremendously. Um, you know, they're, they'll do anything to help you get better here, which is awesome. Um, so the only one that's going to get in my way is myself, you know, and so I just want to let, let good be great and we'll see how, you know, see what we can do this year. Yes, sir. Keep realizing that man. Uh, what's your favorite Foo Fighter song before I let you go? What's, what's the, uh, Uh, hero and, uh, learn to fly are pretty, are obviously like classic and, but, and so is Everlong, but of the three, I'm going to go with Everlong. Really? yeah, just the drums in it, man. It get, gets you going, but I, you can't go wrong, man. You could put them on. You could put them on shuffle all day and have a good time. So I, I would have chose "Learn to Fly" out of those three. I feel like yeah. "Everlong" and and "My Hero" are just too mainstream. They're great songs, but I'm like that is that is the uh, typical answer that people would go with. So I'm gonna go "Learn to Fly" on that. But yeah. dude, uh, keep killing it, man. Uh, hopefully, you, we'll see you in L.A. Uh, I'm I'm yeah. I'm. Sorry that Darnell's phone died, but again, like I said, it happens every single episode. <laughs> Unfortunately, he did not find his charger before we uh, before we ended here. But I'll let you no get worries. back to it. I appreciate you guys. Hey, tell Darnell I appreciate you, man. It's good to see you. Always, always good to learn. You know, he's always he's 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 like me. He's a little philosophical about baseball, yeah. so I, I I definitely appreciate that. Absolutely. I mean, we're gonna have to hop on a call again soon, just so he can continue 100%. to finish that sentence that he had in his head. Well, how about this? We'll, we'll, let's, let's do something, you know, let's plan something in a couple months. We'll catch back up and see how things are going. Oh, yeah.